Three. Hello, everybody. My name is Econ Gormley. I'm your host. Welcome to the Insight Cafe. And today, 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 I'm excited about today, y'all, because today I have my good friend, Jasmine Debian, and her amazing, adorable puppy, Bote. Jasmine is an international coach, business consultant, and co-author of the best-selling book, Midas Touch. She's also a dear, dear friend. She's helped me out a lot with like business consulting and, and getting clarity and, and, and getting over myself. And um, so I wanted to invite her on today to share her insights and her perspective of what she's up to. Also, she's also known as the Inspiress because she inspires people just to be more in life, to breathe in that good stuff and breathe out the bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So today, 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 I wanted to invite you on to talk about something that um, I think is super important for all, for everybody to know, especially people in business, is the come from. And I know that you have a lot of insight about that. So I wonder if you could kick us off. Like, what, what do people even mean when they say the come from? What, what, what is that? Well, it's kind of like where where are you coming from when you're talking, you know, like, mm -hmm. so where do you, the words you're talking come from? What's the source behind them? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I often, I like the, the, why I'm, I'm, I love to come from is because often uh, I have people that tell me things like, I can't believe you just said that and I'm not upset. You know, like I tell them things. I just, I see things, right? When I talk to somebody mm. and, and I just see it with no judgment. My come from is without judgment, right? Mm. So when I say the words, like the energy behind it is a, non-judgmental energy mm. and so it lands in their world as they don't need to to fight they don't need to defend mm. themselves they just they can just hear it mm. so it's like your come from is where are you coming from when you're talking to i, I mean you can i, I could be talking to anybody, but even yourself, like, mm. where are you coming from? Are you coming from love? Mm. And a lot of people are afraid of the word love. I'm not talking about, oh, goo goo ga ga gee gee. I'm, I'm going to guess you're not talking about, hey, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, hey, <laughs> how you doing? Yeah. I'm not talking about that one. That one actually didn't sound like love, but more like love. <laughs> to me yeah i need to work like, on that, <laughs> that so, okay so not so, so not lust or kind of romantic or or like like um infatuation yeah not that kind of love you know love love is the place where there's no judgment there's just what is it's like acceptance mm of what is so are you coming from there or are you coming from i don't know let me show you how good i am oh, like trying to prove something right like look how smart i am yeah actually now that you mentioned it, i was talking to another client the other day and he said one of his things is he's always trying to be the smartest person in the room and the very next thing he said after that was i'm so tired i don't know why I'm like, well, if you're if you're coming from the place of trying to be the smartest person in the room, man, you're working triple time, dude. And of course, you're going to be tired. Of course, like that takes up energy. Right. So I'm curious now as to like, why, why, why should we come from love? I mean, even though it sounds obvious to me, I think it's one of those things that sounds obvious, but might, might not be really that obvious. Like what is on offer? by coming from love or coming from that space?
beauty, peace, understanding, mm. compassion, stillness. In that space, it's just calm, you know? Mm. When, when, when you're in a space of you know, like your your client was saying, like, I have to be the best, I have to be the smartest person in the room. There's a lot of work involved in that, man. I mean, yeah. you know, you, you got to go into your head and you got to rummage through it. And you got to be like, okay, where, 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 what about here? And what about there? And what about this corner of my mind? And you, you know, and, and relating that to performance, I just had an insight. I remember in Taekwondo, when I was trying to be the best person in the room. It was so tiring. And I got, I was so busy in my mind thinking about it. I wasn't really in the game. I used to get my ass kicked a lot. And I would notice when I hung out with the really like, like not like the good guys, but like the world champions and like the Olympians, like the really cool guys. What I noticed about them was they felt really present. They just felt like they were there, like they're there. And to point back to this conversation, I really felt a sense of like, they really love playing this game. Like they just genuinely loved playing this game. Like it like, and I I wonder if their come from was also love, love for the game. Like they just loved it, you know? Mm. And the results of them loving the game and being present was they were like, they were really damn good. Yeah. Like, the, like for like, you know, as you, as you were mentioning these, these, taekwondo people mm. i used to i used to translate these classes mm. uh, these leadership classes and and you know the the leaders were um you know they had done a lot of work on this on this stuff right they mm. they they had worked on that and i remember because i was a translator i i had to step like i had to be close to them mm -hmm. like on stage mm. And, and I remember the first time I kind of stepped next to one of the leaders where I felt just the space was different. Mm. You know, it's kind of like that, like the come from is like the space that you're sitting in, the mm. space that you're seeing that generates your your words that generates your actions mm. you know yeah so it's kind of like notice notice the words that come out of your mouth and then you'll start seeing where what's where did that come from right mm. and then if you're honest with yourself like i remember the first few times i would listen or i would i would start listening to the words coming out of my mouth and i was like "Ooh, i don't like that i don't like why am i using these words <laughs> you know like in the beginning but then i saw that my come from was like you know i needed to defend myself or i needed to protect myself or you know i felt attacked so this is how i reacted you know like so the more i could settle in to this beautiful calm space whatever was coming out of my mouth was coming from there that's why i call it a come from come from so um i'm thinking about people the audiences who are listening and, and like they're they're hearing like okay this is really good and the come from like well i can really see how 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 this would be really good for my life the next question that comes to my mind is like, okay, Jasmine, how do I do it? How do I, how do I do that cool come from stuff you're talking about? What's the <laughs> tool or technique? What, what would you say to that? Well, there's the, the best tool is to listen. I mean, mm. you know, if you start listening to what's going out, coming out of your mouth and what's going on in your head, you're going to start feeling the difference. You're going to, yeah, you're, you're going to kind of start seeing that. Wait, okay, so that train of thought 
is leading, it's not leading me to love or to that space of there's nothing right, there's nothing wrong. There's just what is. And if I go there, I could rile myself up and I know so, what's yeah. going to come out. So what I'm hearing is it's, it's a, it's a reflection and a noticing. Yeah. I think I saw a quote by our mutual mentor, Michael Neal, and he said, um, he posted a thing by Eckhart Tolle and he said something like, if you can notice something along the lines of, if you can notice where your mind's at, you're not trapped by your mind. You know, if you can see yourself riling yourself up, then you're free because you can see yourself doing it. Um, I was talking to another client too, and, and she had a big insight about worry. And she said, she said, wait a minute, worry doesn't mean my relationship's not bad. No, no, worry doesn't mean my relationship's bad. It just means I'm worried. And I'm like, yeah. And I saw it too. I was like, oh yeah, like we think worry means something about the world. And going back to the come from is that when we can notice that, I think we settle back into that natural come from of like love. I'm like, oh, oh, wow, I'm worried. Okay, I'm scared. And then for me, it's like this natural compassion comes on of like, I'm like, I want to give myself a hug because I'm worried or I'm scared. Right. And, um, and it's like the same thing when we're coming from that place and we're seeing other people act up out of worry, fear, doubt. We don't react to their worry, fear, or doubt. We we kind of see beyond that. We say, "Oh, like you're you're, you're worried." Okay, I like, I can see that. And I, I for me, I want to share a story about you. Actually, remember that time at that bar? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we um um. I remember I I was in. I was in a lot, I think I was going through stuff and I was in like a lot of self-judgment or I was just worried about the future and about my business and where it was in life and compared to where I wanted to be. And I was just having a hard time. I was giving myself a really hard time. And I was like, look at all the stuff that I don't have that I want. And because I don't have it, like, I'm not good enough. And then you said to me, like you said, um, I don't think that me, you said to me, you said to me, I remember, give me a moment. You said to me two things, two insights. And the first thing you said, like, you just don't have it now. doesn't mean you're not going to get it later. And that was the first thing. And I was like, what? And I, like, I was like, that, that, that hit deep. And the second thing you said was, you said, I think you meet, I think that you think not having something means something about you. And I was so interesting because I think I've like, I think other people have said that said that to me, but the way you said it, the come from when you said it was like, like that just hit my heart and I saw it and I was like, wow, I put so much pressure on myself and you didn't need to tell me that, but your come from allowed that insight to, to come. Yeah. Mm. When you're not, when you're not busy mm. with mm. Oh, she just said something. I got to do something with that. I yeah. got to, you know, when, when, when there's nothing in my space, but love mm. and you can receive it and then you can see something, you don't have any work to do around it. Right. There's like, when we hear something from somebody, mm. like, I think we kind of like go, wait, was I being attacked there? Was I judged? Was I like, and, and it's done like this, like it's so quick, right? Yeah. But you just, when you, you're coming from a space, when you speak to people, they can see things, see what falls in the space. I have a theory. I, I wonder if you could explore with me. I have a theory that people can feel the come from even in your writing or your presence or, or your, your, your videos. It's that space that you were creating from that it just flavors everything. Yeah. And I tell people that um, like either in your work or in a relationship, if you don't trust them, if like in your heart, you're like, you, you're kind of insecure about someone and you don't trust them. And even though you're like really nice to them, they can feel the mistrust. And it was, I was, I keep sharing the story. Like I'm another friend and I think, in her relationship, she, she, um, she had this thing with her boyfriend where like, she didn't like, she trusted him, but she like, there's always this doubt in her mind of like mistrust. 
and and it would create a lot of stress and pressure and there would like be a lot of arguments right and like everything she wanted him to do like he wouldn't do and then we were talking one day and she said you know what i i came i had an insight it's either i trust this man or i don't there is no i kind of trust him and then she made that decision because it made sense to her and like the whole relationship changed the person she was dating became a different person meaning he was doing all the things that she wanted him to do their their communication got better their their feeling of closeness got better and i was watching it and and i and it occurred to me like oh there's there's nothing for them to push up against anymore the come from is clean now and the come from is love but things like worry and doubt and mistrust they really drive a wedge or they keep you from that the good come from what what do you think about that well it's it's listen you you there's two things that that came to mind mm. and when you said you know no matter what i say you know she he doesn't get it or he mm -hmm. you know like it's not like and and one of the things that i that i share with friends or with clients about their come from it's like but i'm trying to talk to him and there's nothing it's not working you know and i'm just telling him just notice this notice that you're doing this and the impact that it has i said but what's your come from are you coming from love and they're like of course i'm coming from love i said okay but like are you are you really because you know i mm. could say i could say you're so beautiful, but you need to do this. Or I could say, you're so beautiful, but really need to do this. Like there's, these are the words, there's the words, and then there's the energy behind the words. I, I love that because you know what I saw when you said that is to the person saying it, those two things probably sound the same to them. Yeah. But to yeah. us, you're like, Wait, like one one of those things is very different, but the person saying it is like what the same, don't you see? You know, and um, I yeah. love the story, the energy. Uh, I think again, a mutual mentor, Michael said it, and like he described it the best. He said, "When you come from a judgmental place, you could say all the right things, but what they're gonna, what the other person is gonna hear is, you could say, for example, um, I need you to listen more, but if you're coming from that judgmental place, what the other person is gonna hear is." I need you to listen more, dumbass. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Right? Like, like, could you please like give me more attention, asshole? You know? <laughs> yeah. And and that's the like, first of all, we have to be honest with ourselves. Okay, yeah, I am coming from there. So, mm. you know, I used to watch Dr. Yeah. Phil. I don't do that anymore, but Dr. Phil, the phrase from Dr. Phil that hit me the most was. Do you want to be happy or do you want to be right? Oh, tell right? us more about that. Well, it's kind of like, okay, so be honest with yourself. So you, your judgment in your mind may be right, mm. but focusing on the judgment right now is all, all it's going to do when you're judged, you defend yourselves, yourself. I judge you, you defend. Mm -hmm. And you judge me, I defend. Yeah. So all we're creating is judgment defense. It's kind of like the loop. Yeah. But if you're coming from love, love creates. Mm, there's nothing to defend against in love. Yeah. I, I guess that what I saw the truth in that it was there was something in there. Um, it was like a little spark. Um, it was. Yeah, like the nature, and you said it before we started recording, it's the nature of judgment or the come from of judgment is usually your personal mind and your thinking and your judgments and this is right, this is wrong. But from yeah. the impersonal, from, from the other one, it's, they're really, you don't need to defend against love. You don't need to push up against love because it's so, the feeling is different. Ah, I got it. I think I think the insight was, and I see it a lot too, especially with like working with clients or companies or um, I see this a lot in relationships too, in that, and I got it from um, the book, The Relationship Handbook by Dr. George Pransky, where he said, 
it's two people who really want to love on each other. Like that's what they really want. And I mean, at the end of the day, right? Yeah. And we just get in our own way because we mix up judgment and, and putting that on other people. But if we can really see what we're trying to point to in this conversation of the come from, life is just easier. Yeah. Could, could you speak more to the difference between coming from my, my personal thinking and my judgment versus coming from not that <laughs> or the impersonal mind yeah it's kind of like i've up until now throughout mm. the years of my life thing has things have happened to me and i've made up shit about it <laughs> you know I make, I make up shit every day yeah and I like I I decided things I decided things about myself I decided things about certain types of people I decided things about well if somebody answers like this I'm gonna answer like this yeah. or yeah. it means this or like I that's my little mind mm. like my little mind is is that part that has judged that had made decisions to protect myself that um, has defended myself that you know like everything that has happened my little mind has created a technique because I'm very good with techniques you know like I can manipulate shit all day long <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah when I'm coming from a space of that it's more open it's like it's kind of like you know my personal mind keeps me small it it keeps me tight you know like it keeps things in a big ball of thinking that's stale that's old you know when I'm coming from love I'm coming from a space of openness of accepting whatever is there and not judging it the other day I was talking with someone and my little mind is um has a lot of judgment on people who use drugs mm. I'm gonna say cannabis okay and it's become legal now here i don't know how it is where you're at but it's become legal yeah. here and so now i i'm dealing with people who are just smoking <laughs> mm. where my little per the little jasmine that personal mind is kind of like what is that why are they doing that I don't want to be around it and in the past I would have walked away I've lost many beautiful relationships beautiful conversations because of my little mind mm. but I don't come from there anymore and mm. the other day I was talking with someone and I was amazed at seeing myself not even thinking about it. Because mm. I was coming from, we're having a conversation. Whatever this thought is will bring nothing to this conversation. Mm. And I was just open. And we had a beautiful conversation about withholding and how it would, it, you know, it was like a whole conversation that was like so mind blowing, you know? Yeah, I get that. I, I, I really get that. And what I heard from what you're saying is at any given moment, especially when we interact in the world with other people, or come from is, is a really good creator of experience, right? Because we could have really terrible experiences with really terrible conversations because of our judgment and expectation, or we could be having really great um, conversations with people and interact. And, and um, I really see how impactful that is. So I want to ask you more about this because I to me it's really clear now that um talking to people to come from is really important what about in things like your business or your relationship or like like what can the come from 
what do, what do you see there about the come from and when when we and how and what are the implications of the come from with things like that well you know i i work with customer service people and sales people and um and when you're in customer service and in sales the come from i'm right has no room there there's no room in customer service i'm right the customer's wrong like that conversation in in my opinion just doesn't work in customer service because your idea when you're a business is you want to make sure that your client have the best experience experience mm -hmm. when they're with you so if your staff is coming from a space of they're wrong your clients wrong then your customer is going to feel wrong and then that's the bad experience right so to me understanding the the, the come from is very important when it comes to business um when it comes to love, I think it's also, you know, I think that love people come from a space of, I can't be alone. I need to have somebody in my life. And that come from just creates a whole lot of shit, man. Yeah. You know, it's like when you're like, you're coming from I need someone in my life. No, no, no. You need no one in your life. You need, you need peace in your life. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be with someone. And then, so when you do get with someone, you give them the peace, or they get to experience um, your peace. Or, or you make them stressed out because they need to stay with you because you need somebody. So now they have all the pressure. Uh, okay. So which one do you want? I can see how that would, would translate into business too, right? Because if you're stressed out in your business, your people, your clients are probably being feeling stressed out too because they can feel the come from, right? Yeah. I was... I was talking to um, a consultant about um, getting better at positioning and writing. And, and at first I was trying to write like, oh yeah, like my work helps people with, with businesses and make some more money. And she's like, well, do you have a system for that? And I was like, oh yeah, I don't. And it gets better. Cause like, I realized I was trying to sell that because I thought nobody would, would buy what I really what I'm really, really good at, which is helping people settle down, helping people get more clarity of mind and, um, and peace of mind. And then she asked me, well, what are the outcomes? And I guess, and I said, well, when people are settled, they do go out and do better things. Their business does get better because when they're settled and they're settled in their business, it, it grows because there's less pressure and stress. And I thought, oh, okay, I see now. It, it, this affects everything. Your state of mind affects everything. Your come from affects everything. And I think to me, a premise I'd like to point out, I think that, you know, in the personal development industry, it's like, oh, you have to work on yourself and you have to growth mindset and shit. And I think that the disrupting thing about this conversation is the come from really requires no work on yourself. I tell my clients all the time, there's nothing to do, but there's everything to see. What, what do you think about that? Or what have been your experiences of, of that, of what I'm pointing to? Yeah, uh, I love to point, you know, I've been doing these, these exercises with my clients lately. Mm. I've been like, I know what's going to generate thought. Like, so I say this outrageous statement. Yeah. Right. So I start with, okay, I'm going to do something now. And it, what here, here are the instructions. Mm -hmm. The instructions are notice the thoughts because I'm going to say something. Mm -hmm. You're going to think. Mm -hmm. So I say something outrageous. And then, you know, all of a sudden the thoughts come, <laughs> right? And I'm yeah. like, just notice. Oh, just notice all everything that's showing up with one word or two words or just a phrase that I just said, what it generates in you. Mm, that's such a good exercise. I am totally stealing that. 
<laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, that's Go so ahead. cool. Like I, I already knew. Like, oh yeah, I could, I could say a bunch of out, outrageous things. Yeah, yeah. I, but I didn't, I didn't, I missed the first part of, of telling them to notice the thoughts. And one, <laughs> one thing I've been um, telling clients um, when, when they get really caught up in their habitual thinking about the way the world's going to look and the way their future is going to look and the way their job's going to look, I tell them, for your own sake, I hope you're wrong about the way you think your job's going to look like or your life or, or your marriage or your relationship. Because if you're right, you're screwed. And, and, it's, and even when I say that now, I'm like, it, it really brings you to me, it, it brings up that habitual thinking, like, if you're right about this, like, you're done. Like, why, why bother? But I hope you're wrong about it. Because if you're wrong, there's hope for a better future. Mm. Not, that I meant, not that I think about it. Yeah, like, yeah, if, when I look at the things I want, I don't have, and, and I, I make up all this stuff about it. I do hope I'm wrong about that. Because if I'm right, I'm fucked. <laughs> hmm. And it's really funny how we get riled up, like we get stuck on certain things. Hmm. Just like because we... I'm going to ramble a bit. We think that it's a no. We think it's it's wrong. It's negative. It's not going to happen. It's like we get stuck on it. Like we 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 get stuck on on that thing and we stop moving. Mm. We stop like, it's like we hear a no, or we hear a can't, or we hear a something negative, and we just stop. Mm. What do you mean stop? Tell me more. Like, we, <clears throat> we kind of stop trying. We, mm. Like, we, we, we are so focused on oh man I can't this and I can't that and like so we're putting all our energy on that on the I can't I can't this I can't that and then we stop trying do when you say we stop trying do you mean we stop to me when you said that the word hope came up like you mean we stop trying to make things better. We stop trying to move forward. Cause like, well, like, well, shit, if it's going to look like that, I might as well just park it here. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we stop. It's kind of like, you know, when, when I, I think we were off camera, I was telling you, I love, I call myself the inspirers cause I like, I love to inspire people. Mm. Inspire, and when I'm talking about inspiring, I'm talking about breathing life into something that has stopped living you know, into a place where you've just stopped putting your love into it. You kind of decided this is a no. Okay, so let me go look here. <laughs> you know, they kind of put that aside and let me do something else there. Yeah. But it's just that we gave up, really. We saw one thing, the thing was no, or I can't or it won't happen, or whatever, some negative thing, and then we give up, mm. drop it. Mm. Tell me more about that. So as the Inspire Us, you, you help people breathe life into things. Well, what does that even look like? Sometimes we get we start thinking innocently i'm gonna i'm gonna say for example i'm gonna stop smoking mm. right i'm gonna try that one let's do that one so okay i'm gonna try that one i'm gonna stop smoking how am i gonna do it i'm gonna start with this i'm gonna make a plan right i'm gonna do this i'm gonna 
through the pack. I'm not going to be around alcohol because I know that, you know, like you make this whole plan. And the first thing you see, you're smoking. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, well, I tried it once, right? And then you keep going and you keep trying again. And then you try it twice. And then you're like, okay, it's not going to work. That's it. I give up. I'm just not going to do it. Mm. So if you look at the clarity, if you go, you're so caught up in all the thinking about, I tried, didn't work. I suck. You know, like you kind of like made up a whole bunch of stuff. Let me drop the dog here. I'm moving too much for her. <laughs> so like you made up so much stuff that you can't even see that mm. what you want is health anymore. Like you're caught up like this, right? You just said what you want is health. What do you mean by that? Well, I think I was making it up. I mean, when I stopped smoking, uh, yeah. what I wanted was health. Mm. You know, what I wanted was, what am I doing? I'm breathing in something into my body mm. and throwing it back out. Like, I was like, what am I doing? And my doctor kept saying, Jasmine, if you quit before 30, your lungs will become will come back pink, you know, they'll be pink again. For some reason that stuck with me. Mm. And I was like, I want pink lungs. <laughs> like you that know? was the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for me, it was like, I want pink lungs. And okay, I quit at 29 and 11 months, <laughs> you know, but yeah. But before that, it was my small mind. Uh. You know, my small mind was stopping me and it was, mm. yeah, it was, it was just, you know, every thought that I'd hear, mm. you know, you're just a failure, just, you know, worked for me because <laughs> mm. I really wanted to keep smoking. Yeah. Mm. So we're coming up on time. I'd love to ask you what's, well, two things. Like, what's one thing you'd love to give to people listening? Like if, you know, you have, you have their attention, what's one thing you would like to give to them as a gift, like in, in like an insight or a knowing. And the second thing is, you know, I'd love for you to plug what you're up to. Where can we find you? What are you doing? Um, how do you help people? Hmm. What do I want to leave you with? You are not your thoughts. You're actually the seer. You're seeing the thoughts. So I'll, I'll repeat that. So you're not your thoughts. You are the seer of your thoughts. Yeah. Hmm. To quote, that's some deep shit, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, I, I have conversations with so many people about this, about, you know, your, your thoughts mm. are not you. I mean, you and I are in this conversation yeah. on a daily basis, right? Mm -hmm. I still believe them sometimes. <laughs> oh, I still believe them too. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, oh, wait, judging is a thought. Oh, man, I didn't even know. I thought judgment was real. Yeah. No, judgment is a thought also. Like, I just keep finding new thoughts all of a sudden. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that if you guys can just start listening 
start listening to what's going on in your head. You have conversation with yourselves all the time. I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what am I up to? Right now, I'm actually kind of recreating my business. Um, I took advantage of it with the, the pandemic. <laughs> um, so I know that I love working with solopreneurs and I love working with, you know, self-employed and small and business medium companies. And, um, and I, I love to help people get out of their own way. Mm -hmm. I love to also get them out of the overwhelm when it comes to business, mm. you know, like I'm, I'm, um, I'm a, I'm a computer geek. Let's just say the words. I'm a, a, I have judgment I'm, about that. <laughs> it's not, it's not even a computer geek. It's a software. I'm a software person and my creation is I, I'm very creative with workarounds and how to use you know free stuff and make them all work and make make us look good you yes. know like make us look good to the person that's looking at our company mm -hmm. and so I help people you know I do stuff like MailChimp and I do stuff like automating social media and I do stuff like websites and podcast processes. I'm very good with processes. So, but what I do really is help people get clear, get perspective, get organized and get going. Yeah. And shout out testimonial. Like Jasmine is amazing. She helped me out with my MailChimp and like, it was super over, I was super overwhelmed by it, but Jasmine in, in an hour and in two hours, she really helped me streamline everything. And I highly recommend her. And so I'll, you know, sign up for the newsletter, which I like the link will probably be down there somewhere, but you know, you can thank Jasmine the, for the <laughs> fact that I have a newsletter. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, thank you, Jasmine. I really, you know, I love you and I appreciate you and thank you for sharing your stories and thank you, Butte, for, for hanging out with us and being the loveliest three principles mascot I've seen. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. It's fun. I, I do my podcast. I invite everybody. I'm not, I'm yeah. rarely invited. So I was like, oh, I'm going to be a guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, this has been lovely and um, thank you. All right. Thank see you. you. Bye. Bye.